<laughs> right. So, hello, Dan from Iron Dragon hello, Design. Man. Good to see you. Thanks for coming to onto the podcast. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks um, for having me. You're welcome. And how is uh, the relocation going uh, in Blandford? Yeah, it's 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 going all right actually. I'm only what about a week and a bit in so far, two yeah. weeks maybe. I don't know how time works here; it seems to slow down a bit. Um, <laughs> is it like that? Is it basically... is it like a more of a country kind of pace? Yeah, that that's it's really weird relocating from Bournemouth, which is essentially a city now, to a you know I'm only I'm only what 15 miles up the road. I'm not even far out. Um, it's 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 a little bit weird because I you know I, I decided after finishing up a little early yesterday um to pop into town and maybe go to the local bakery and see if i could get some some you know some cakes or something um and and it was only half four and everything was closed i was like oh this is this is bizarre <laughs> yeah 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 it is it's not far away but it's a different lifestyle mm, yeah it? absolutely it's 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 yeah very very slowed down and I'm, I'm still trying to get into get into the right gear with that at the moment does it make any difference and difference to the operational side of the business? Not particularly. Um, I've, I've, I've been working. Um, I've been working from my own office, um, or you know, I started the business in my bedroom. So you know, it's it's one of those kind of. I, all I need is a desk and and a computer, and I, I, I can go uh, basically. So um, there's there's no issues with that. Like internet is great. Internet is fine. That's the most important thing for me. As long as I've got a good internet connection, I can do things like this. I can still do all my one-to-ones, no problem. Um, I'm not so far out of, you know, um, out, out, out of place that I can't go and connect with people in face-to-face. -face. Um, but I'm kind of used to working online. I'm kind of used to working with, with clients all over the place. You know, I've got clients in London. I had clients in, in the States. I've worked with people across Europe. So it's... To me, 15 miles outside of Bournemouth, not really, not really a big problem, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so how did you get started uh, in with branding, getting into branding and design? Oh, branding specifically. Um, so my my way back, my history was I started, I, had, I did my degree in computer games design. Um, so I was always going to be somewhere in the design sphere. Uh, graduated during the, the previous financial crisis, couldn't find a job for love nor money because the company I did my placement for had gone under during my final year at university. Um, and uh, with anything like that, it's it's who you know, who can get you through the doors. And unfortunately, I didn't have anyone to help me with that. So it was kind of like bashing my head against a brick wall for a couple of years. So I reskilled in my mid-20s, used a lot of the... Um, the, the knowledge and uh, that I'd learned from design, game design and especially game theory and the psychology behind um, behind gamers and then twisted that to to fit into a more sort of branding uh, centric uh, position. So, so uh, can you explain that a bit more about the <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it always sounds very <laughs> weird when I, when, I, when I pull that one out of the bag. Um, so one of the things I did at the university uh, is called player psychology, um, and it's all about understanding why game players do what they do when they're faced with a certain situation. Um, so, for example, they're on a road. Um, something appears off in the distance, do they head towards it or do they veer off a bit? What, how do they sort of react to audio and visual stimuli? Um, and it works very similarly to, to brand psychology, which is based on how a, um, an audience or a, um, a customer base or a client base reacts to audio and visual stimuli, which is your brand, basically. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very similar psychological markers. I've just taken what I learned from gaming and applied it to branding. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you took the those elements from gaming, game theory, and mm. just so that so it's applying that to business, to branding, yeah, the business, yeah, absolutely. And I, I already had sort of you know I've I've been um, you know I've been drawing and and, and doing design work and, and you know I'm, I'm a very artistic person anyway. So those hard skills were there. It was just applying those additional sort of um, those those brand items and, and uh, bits and pieces for it to uh, to you know round out the business a bit more, so so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And and why did you choose um, like the the name Iron Dragon, not just Daniel J Moore, 
designs or branding yeah well that was yeah that's a good question i mean that was that was a, a that was a very conscious choice um my, when i first started out on my own i thought if i want to go into the idea of um dealing with with brand um not just design i've also got to be able to brand myself as well so um I, I didn't really want to go in as a personal brand. I wanted to have something that was a bit different, a bit more sort of interesting and a bit more bold and, and exciting. Um, so Iron Dragon, the name itself comes from, um, it's kind of a, an ode to an old um, an old Eastern parable about koi fish swimming up a lake, uh, swimming up a stream. Um, mm. They reach a waterfall and they start trying to climb the waterfall like, like salmon do. Um, and there's demons in the forest around and they're jeering and throwing stones and trying to get them to turn back. Uh, and over 100 years, all of this school of koi turn back except one of them, uh, which reaches the top of the waterfall. And the gods see this and are really impressed with it. So they turn it into a dragon, which in Eastern mythology is a sign of uh, strength and wisdom. They're very noble creatures in, in, in sort of China and Japan. Mm. Um, and that's kind of the story that, that in sort of, mirrors the, the journey I've kind of gone through over the last sort of decade or so of um, of, of consistently trying despite everything being thrown at me basically. <laughs> um, so the whole idea of Iron Dragon is it's about tenacity, it's got that, that strength to it, that iron kind of will and that kind of thing. Um, you've got to have an iron will to reach the top of the waterfall is kind of how I how I, um, how I show that. Um, so that's that's how that kind of ties in, that's where the name comes from. Yeah, yeah, so you essentially branded yourself Mm. obviously um with the iron dragon <laughs> uh logo uh, iron dragon brand uh, iron dragon brand yes and, yeah, yeah yeah um and yeah and yeah it's, it's it's also one of those things as well that it invokes something in people there's 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 people that hate it and that's fine i like that some people hate it um because equally there are some people that absolutely love it and absolutely you know really adore that that kind of thing yeah. and they tend to be better clients for me yeah yeah so like a big part of what you do is I've heard you talk about it in other interviews is like is the brand people think a brand is just a logo mm. um they think once they've got a once they've got a logo then they've got they've, that's they've it. Done, the brand. Right? they've got a few <laughs> colors they've got a few colors yeah. and colors um, and that's it yeah so no, um you know, a, 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 a logo is a, um, a logo is, is, is a brand in the same way that a goalie is a football team. Um, you know, you, 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 I'm not very good at sports metaphors, so I don't know if this is going to land. Um, but, um, but you, you don't want to leave home without one. You don't want to go to the game without one, but it's not the whole team <laughs> there are there are other there's other players in that team and it's the same with the logo you 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 know it's important to have one yes it's very important to have one but your brand is a lot more than that because it's also you know as you say all, all the colors all the fonts um you know any layouts and shapes and things you use that's on the physical side but also on a on a more emotional side your brand is actually what people think about you and you can influence that which is what your colors and shapes and everything are for influencing those thought processes but you can't directly control it so the brand itself is actually something that's that you've got to um you've got to understand how to how to sort of manipulate and change in in people's eyes using voice tone character all these sort of things whenever you interact with with your um with your your desired client base really so when you say uh, tone or character can you give me give me an example of that um so you could have two okay so this is a really good one um pepsi and coke right both sell arguably basically the same product um they sell a a you know a caffeinated beverage essentially <laughs> um or decaffeinated or various you know other things of like that um but they Cherry. sell the same mm. basic product. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly but they sell the same basic product um but their brand and the way they talk is very different. Um, Coke is all about fun. It's all about keeping things light. Um, it's, it's all about sort of optimism. It's a very optimistic brand, whereas Pepsi is a bit more of a rough edges brand. It's got mm. a bit more of sort of a, a rebel tone to it. So although they're selling almost identical products, you are going to find that there are people that, that um, prefer one or the other. And it's generally not down to the taste. It's how that product is making them feel. Mm. Yeah, it was interesting. Was it at the Super Bowl at the weekend? Mm. The Pepsi stage 
had like Snoop Dogg, Eminem, yeah. uh, Beyonce. They were all kind of, I suppose, what you would call rebellious uh, mm. brands. So that wouldn't be a accident, accidental. That would be no. that, something that's, that's that Pepsi very would have formulated. At, yeah, exactly. Looking at who they are, who their character is, who their voice is, and matching that to other brands. And that's 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 what sort of looking at brands is is really doing. Is if you understand who you are, you can not only understand who your clients are as well, but you also understand who to match yourself with and who's going to make the best partners for you for yourself. Yeah. So, like, for example, the Coca Cola brand, uh, Coca Cola stage at the mm -hmm. Super Bowl, that would be they would have artists on there who would fit into the Coca Cola brand. Yeah. Maybe something like Justin Bieber. I was going to say Ed, Ed Sheeran or something like that. Ed Sheeran, you know, optimistic, like fun, and 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 joyful. That that kind of that kind of tone. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. And I guess that also when we look at um, examples in uh, commerce. Um, I mean, an obvious example, I guess, is Apple. Yeah, the way they do their branding. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very. It, it's very obvious when you're looking at some Apple branding because it's very sort of it's very white. Um, it's very clean. It's it's kind of got that almost sort of semi futuristic vibe to it uh, because they're sort of the the creators and the innovators. They're all about sort of pushing forwards and and creating new things and and um, and, and innovating um, and building. Um, so you you get that very sort of um, you know poppy kind of like vibe to it. That very sort of sort of quick quick cliff notes almost going. Here's the ideas. Here's the ideas. They're sort of idea generators basically. So so you can you know you can see it in in a lot of their their marketing, especially and how they choose to present themselves and how they choose to present their their tone of mm. voice as well. Um, what their brand actually is. Do you have a like a a brand that you are quite impressed by quite or you find inspiring um what well, yeah i've got a few um it changes though because sometimes you'll have a brand um that you really like and then they'll do something stupid and go well I've, I've, I've seen what's happened there and that's that's bad so i'm, I'm going off you guys a bit um but that that's the market that's that's how it kind of works um but one of the ones i've always been consistently impressed with weirdly is like is like nintendo uh, which again goes back to the gaming thing um but this is this is an interesting fact like nintendo actually started in the early 1900s i think it might have been the late late 1800s actually um making western style playing cards for a japanese market <laughs> and since then their business has constantly evolved and changed but it's always been based around the pillars of innovation and fun and it's always been based around that same those same two values um so everything they do and every product they bring out and every advert they do is all about pushing sort of those innovative boundaries in 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 play and enjoyment but also showing fun and, and excitement and, and and being kind of that um that kind of company for people yeah yeah and is that why you uh tend to concentrate on i mean you're you like japan don't you you're a yeah <laughs> a fan of their their culture or brand i suppose you could call it I just, oh. I'm, yeah, it, it's 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 similar with other, with other areas as well. Like, there's, there's a couple of sort of you know uh, regions across the world that I'm just absolutely fascinated with, uh, sort of in the South Americas, in Africa, in in Asia. Um, I'm just I'm just fascinated by by sort of you know and, and you know again you can see this in my brand as well. Um, I'm fascinated by sort of um, ex exploration, travel, and, and looking at these these other areas um that are on the grand scheme of things on a universal scale not all that far away from us um but culturally culturally i can't say that now <laughs> culturally <laughs> culturally yeah. there we go um are a million miles away from us um and it's it's fascinating i've been out to japan um i've been been, been once and looking to go again soon um and it's it's an amazing it's an amazing place and it's, it's absolutely it's, you know it's it's, it's quite quite breathtaking some of the architecture and some of the design um it's got a, a whereas whereas western design is based on um interestingly a lot of sort of medieval and christian principles um eastern and japanese design especially is based more on a buddhist principle and it's 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 fas fascinating seeing sort of sort of what has come out of that and what's come out of the myths and legends of the area to create the the artistic styles they have over there yeah yeah they certainly have um you know, amazing art and an amazing culture, don't they? Mm, absolutely. So going, uh, talking about uh, business again, um, 
where would a business like a startup a startup who wants to uh they're starting their business um where would they start with their branding if they had a, had a uh, you know maybe not not an unlimited budget but a <laughs> a you know, even, even with even with yeah, even even with a small budget, you know, you, you, I think the, the the thing that a lot of uh, a lot of startups and even a lot of large companies miss is the internal um, sort of mirror, basically. Um, and I, th I think that a lot of startups, um, if they've got a spare, you know, a spare a spare bit of cash to to spend spend on this sort of thing, should look at the idea of of. Um, of understanding who they are to, to begin with. So, so they can do that internalized look and go, here's who we are, how does that fit in the market and, and what does that mean for us going forward? So by taking those, um, by, by taking that time to look at themselves and by taking that, that, um, that approach, they have a greater understanding and appreciation for their own values, for why they're doing what they're doing, which is really the most important thing. Um, and then being able to show that in a clear, concise and consistent manner at an early stage often means that they get a, a larger share of what they're trying to achieve because the people know what it is um, they're trying to do what they're selling and why they should be interested. And I think that's the most important bit really for small businesses, especially in startups, is why should someone be interested in buying from you and not someone else? What's what's different? What's What makes you more interesting and more unique than, than the next person doing what you do? Okay, interesting. So you could have a, uh, a one-man band mm -hmm. um, and they can still have a brand. They can still... Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, because your brand is really, um, as I said, it's what people, it's how people perceive you. Um, it's what it's what people see when they when they you know when they encounter you and interact with you, and it's those thoughts and feelings they go away with. That's what the brand really is. And so even even sole traders and, and individuals and and you know small small businesses can can do that because you as a person have your own personal you know don't really like saying it but you have your personal brand you have that kind of what makes you unique and what makes you that that specific mix and that specific you know um, uh, sort of cauldron of, of of things that come together of, of attributes that come together to create who you are and those values um, are what drive people towards you or people away from you depending on how how those values are leveraged um, and even so even you know individuals can can use that well so long as they know what their values are and what it is they stand for. But um, if they're not certain, then it becomes a lot harder to connect with people uh, because it's a bit wishy-washy. So I, I, I think there's a real power even for individuals to understand this kind of thing because it also helps them understand why they go into business in the first place. And sometimes the reasons behind that aren't quite what they think, um, but they can be really powerful to help bring people in to what they're doing, especially if they, they utilise a brand story. Mm. Yeah, and... It's interesting. Uh, I'm fascinated by the uh, brand archetypes mm. um, and how you came up with them as well. Or if you did come up with them, I don't know whether well, I, I, did, I, I would not, I would not to have done that. They, they're actually from a uh, Swiss psychologist called Carl Jung. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sort of turned, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Synchronicity and everything like that, wasn't it? Synchronicity. That, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's right. Um, so, so he came up with these uh, archetypes um, and they're sort of basically character archetypes um for stories essentially but with the way that we tell stories in brands as well they work exactly the same for uh for brands and in fact they're actually very useful for brands uh the character archetypes because um it's easier to get across complex ideas when you attach them to a knowable character so there are 12 archetypes um and just saying them will get evoke a feeling or evoke a, a an image of a popular culture character for you for, for everyone who hears them so if you associate your brand with one of those whenever your your audience interacts with it they feel like they're interacting with a character and they can gain a greater and easier appreciation for what it is you're trying to get across and how you're trying to get it across to them basically so a good, good example is going back to what we were talking about earlier with coke and pepsi um the rebel brand uh, which is which would be Pepsi um, a bit more um, they they've got you know you say the word rebel and you immediately gain a sort of like character in your head as you do it so you get that kind of Han Solo type in your head 
because that's that's what we see as the rebel in popular culture. And when mm. you see that, you gain you you also ascertain a set of kind of values towards that character as well, and how that character interacts and what you feel interacting with that character, which makes it easier for brands to connect to people. Yeah, yeah. And like how how would um I mean I did the test, the yes. well the brand personality <laughs> test, and uh I came out as a seducer which yes. apparently is <laughs> exclusive. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, could you look at a brand and you could just tell what it was? Uh, like, you know, like a, a internationally known brand, a well-known brand, yeah. and say, is that a, that's a rebel? I mean, you did that with Pepsi, saying that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Like, like you, you, you absolutely can do that. And the, more, the harder it is to do with a company, the more muddied their message tends to be um so the ones that work really well are the ones that it's 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 almost crystal clear it's, they've almost got that face on them um so if i went uh, levi ikea both every person brands because they're both all about um really basic simple stuff that's good for everyone it's just you know easy to use everyone loves it great stuff that's that's the every person brand um as i said before uh, nintendo or apple both creator brands uh, because they're all about either cre creativity or innovation because mm. they're all about that kind of thing they, they sit very much in that kind of area uh, north face uh, explorer brand because it's all about getting into the wild being out being out in the um, on the fringes it's all about ruggedness it's that sort of kind of tough kind of nature to kind of kind of look to it so it's kind of got that you know indiana jones kind of feel to it uh, using a lot of Harrison Ford in this one today. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, yeah. If you've if you've got a strong brand uh, character, it's easy for people to understand what you're trying to say to them. So, films like Star Wars, are they consciously using those those? Uh, oh yeah, definitely. They've they've got all of them in there. Absolutely, you've you've got all the archetypes in there. Um, you know, as, as, as we said already, Han Solo is very much sort of the, the rebel archetype. You've got Yoda, who's the sage archetype. You've got Luke, who's who's the innocent archetype, interestingly enough. Um, he's, he's all about hope and, you know, literally the, the first or fourth film, depending on which way you chronologize it, um, is called A New Hope. And it's all about Luke's story. Um, you, you've got it all in there and it's all it's all based on this popular culture thing. And as you know, as a um, as a society, we've always looked to popular culture and myths and legends to formulate almost our sort of moral compass and our and our sort of you know our our, um, our, our direction as a species. You know, you go all the way back into into sort of you know um, even prehistoric times with cave paintings and things like that. That was storytelling of a type, um, and you know the the you know the the Greek odysseys and. Roman myths and legends and, you know, Viking myths and legends and all this kind of thing is about storytelling and it all uses similar character tropes. So it's, it's always ingrained in us, which is why using archetypes for your business is so powerful because it's almost, it's almost visceral. It's almost something that's, that's, um, that's biologically imposed in us uh, um, at kind of a genetic level to understand and, and know these characters basically. So it could go even back as far as say Shakespeare and before then using different yeah uh, absolutely you, you could look at a shakespeare play and and you could you could see most of the similar archetypes in there they, they may you know um obviously the language is, is different and how it's how it's utilized but the the characteristics and the values of these of these players is all the same yeah and i was looking at uh, your services and you do a service uh there's the phoenix rebranding yes. service that's um, right yeah so how easy I mean, it can be done, obviously, but mm. is it easy for a company to change their brand? It requires thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not so much as just, you know, getting to a crossroads and turning left. It's not, you know, yeah. you, you've, you've, you've got to take the time to to acknowledge what, what it is and, and most importantly, why it is you're changing. Um, because if you just change for the sake of it, it's um, you're, you're going to probably run into the same problems that caused you to want to change in the first place. Um, a rebrand is, 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 is more about addressing a problem than people think it is. It's not just, oh, I think I need to look different. It's, 
it's understanding that, okay, we're not resonating with the right people. Why is that? Let's look into what the reasons for that is and what we're trying to say and what they're hearing and, and understanding where that disconnect lies. Um, and, and then using that, um, that information going forwards to make sure the brand solves that problem and, and creates that connection that, that, that might be missing. Um, th this is kind of why I called that, that service Phoenix was because it's not about taking something and then making something brand new. It's about taking something, letting that die off, and then from that, taking it back again um, from, from, the, from the ashes. And, and it's the same thing, but in a new skin, basically. And it's, it's all about understanding how to, um, you know, how to first um, decipher what the problems are and then solve them um, using, using, you know, design and, and voice and tone and things of that sort of nature. Yeah, do you have any, like uh, rebrandings in the in the commerce world, well known well, any any well known brands, you think have done a really good job on rebranding? Oh, well, uh, they have done a really good. Um, yeah, and it oh, that's, that's, um, I was trying to think of one or two that, that I haven't already mentioned today <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise I'd just be regurgitating the same six brands. Um, what about uh, think... LV? For example, yeah, uh, I was literally about to say that actually. Funny enough, because who's my partner works there? Uh, <laughs> it's um, yeah, yeah. LV, LV did a really interesting job with with theirs, um, the, the whole Liverpool, Liverpool Victoria brand as it was first had a very um, you you try and say that without sounding like a like a posh sort of like city, yeah. London city, you know, city of London person. You know, it's it's very difficult because it, it's got that kind of old old kind of money kind of vibe to it, and it, and it had that kind of rulery vibe to it. Whereas LV, um, and you know, funny enough, actually, you know, used to pass by the the big LV heart almost every day, like you yeah. know, back in <laughs> back in Bournemouth. <laughs> Um, it's got a very different vibe to it. It's got a very different community vibe to it. The whole idea is it's, it's about looking after their customers. And, and incidentally, you know, having knowing, well, being married to someone who works there, I see, I see a more, I, I often see the more internal structures that other people who are just clients of them don't see. Um, and, and it's interesting because it's, it's not just one of those kind of, you know, um, facelifts, so to speak, just just changing the face of it and not actually looking at the internal structure, but actually they 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 really do look after their their um their staff and they really try and look after their clients as best they can. They've got that real caregiver vibe to mm. them, um, and that's when a brand's a rebrand is successful um, when it's not just you know changing the visuals for the sake of it. It's changing the visuals to match what it is they're offering and to make sure that that it's all consistent. Yeah, because yeah, some rebrands have been, they've looked, sometimes looked like they're going to fail, but then they mm. work out fine in the end. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think the that's BCP the branding, so, but they, that wasn't a rebrand, I suppose. The BCP Council. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was just <coughs> sort of a new brand, really, almost. Because it's more, just, yeah, it's more it a new brand. Really. Yeah, it, 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 but 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 I suppose it was a, it was almost a rebranding of three separate brands into a into a single brand. Um, yeah. And yeah, I remember I remember there being a bit of a kickback about that, but I think that might have just been the whole merging of the councils. I think people weren't happy with. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's certainly it's certainly something that can be done wrong. Um, and when it is done wrong, it's it's, it's it can be disastrous, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. But if you, um, I suppose, if you have tarnished your brand then you know it's definitely worth rebranding to pull yourself out of the the mess that you're in yeah but it has to be done in, in an honest manner um you know you can't just just <laughs> cause a <laughs> massive mess in your brand and go i'll just change my my, my visuals and no one will know the difference because they will <laughs> yeah, um, yeah the market is smarter than people give it credit for and i think that you know you've, you've got to go Put your hands up and go i made a massive error here um and you've al almost got to tie that to your rebrand and go look we made a big big mistake we we hold our hands up to it so we're redoing this entirely <laughs> so that we can show you just who we actually are <laughs> yeah true true and so consumers have a long memory um you know I, there's there's certain brands that I, won't, I won't touch with a barge pole because of how they made me made, made me but yeah made me feel um and i just won't go near them again yeah yeah, no, yeah, I can think of some. Mm. So it's, 
if someone wants, can. Can. oh yeah yeah so if someone wants to um use your services um what what services do you have available that people can uh can so i've got a range of things um at the moment i uh, well, at the moment, i have a i have a brand strategy service uh which it's called the brand adventurer it's a really good workshop if you're not sure about your brand um it's very good because we go through a whole manner of things uh from values uh mission uh why you're doing what you're doing character voice tone everything it's 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 uh it's a quite quite a hefty workshop um so it's either three hours or two one and a half hour sessions depending on on what your constitution for that kind of thing is <laughs> um but that's a great place to start if you're thinking about a rebrand, um, because it gives you that um, it gives you that strategy. It gives you that kind of knowledge of what it is you're currently doing and whether that's correct or not to to what you're trying to achieve. Um, it's also really good for uh, for brands who want to kind of confirm things about themselves. So I've done it for several people who just wanted to um, have an outsider's view of what it was they're doing to make sure that they're, they're on the right tracks. And there are a few tweaks here and there that need to be made, but nothing major. And it's a really good service if you're just looking for, um, looking for that confidence to, to push your brand to the next level. Um, so that's, that's the, the brand adventure course. Uh, oh, you so say that's, workshop. That's, that's sort of the, yes. yeah, yeah, workshop. Yeah. Is it is it one to one or is it with other people? It, it is, yes. Yeah. So, so it, because of the nature of, of what it is that this gives your business, it can't be done as a big group of multiple businesses. This is a very personal, um, deep dive, uh, really getting my claws into your business um, and helping you understand all the ins and outs of, of the brand and, and uh, how to how to take a bit more control and ownership over the brand. I think ownership is the best word to use for it. It's all about that that you are um you are the person who should be owning this brand letting it get out of control will just mean it, it becomes messy so this is all about understanding how to how to take the best ownership of your brand um and and what it actually is what it stands for yeah yeah and do you have a, a service which like, offers ongoing support uh or yeah, mentoring absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, well, I'm actually just building one at the moment. Can't say the name at the moment because it's it's in in, in the works. But I am actually building a, a sort of a one to one kind of mentorship pro program. It's kind of similar to the idea of a business coach, um, but it's more specific to to the brand and the ongoing strategy for the for the client as well. So it's all, it's all about um, helping answer those tricky questions about how to. Um, how to push the brand in the right direction, how to make sure that everything they're doing is on brand and also making sure that what they're doing, um, especially in companies that have um, have more, uh, sorry, more colleagues and more workers, understanding how to make sure that everyone is on the same kind of page with that basically. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going, going to find- On the other side of course, yeah. sorry. <laughs> just jumping. On the other side of course, I do also do the graphic design as well. So not only do I do you know the strategy and the, the, the talky bits, the consulting, um, but I also do the actual uh, physical work. So when it comes to design, I do you know do logos, I do brochures, eBooks, uh, layout design, all that kind of thing. Um, so we can do the visual side of, of, of your business as well. Brilliant. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you just a, a few quick fire questions uh, before we end off. Uh, what is your favorite or what is your favorite or most useful software tool? Do you mean physical tool? Or, so, 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 so software, I suppose. Software, so yeah. it's, it's software, um, probably Adobe Illustrator. Um, I spend quite a lot of time in there. So, so yeah, it, it's, I, I don't know if it's cheating saying the Adobe suite um because that's where i spend 95 percent of my time but, but yeah, yeah it's definitely one of the top one of one of those three illustrator photoshop or indesign it switches depending on what exactly i'm doing but but yeah that's 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 that uh, cool favorite uh, album cover um oof, i actually want to say dookie by green day um oh, i'm familiar with that one that's uh, you probably know if you saw it, but it's it's the it's got like it's like a very really cartoonized kind of like picture of like an atomic bomb dropping. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. So early nineties, I think it was. Um, yeah, really like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite food? Um, yeah, got me sushi. I'm a big big fan of sushi. Um, yeah, next time I get to Japan, I'm going to try and eat fugu, um, which is the poison blowfish. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and going back to uh, music, your, your favourite musical group? I have to say probably the Food Fighters. Ah, okay. Interesting. 
interesting so you're more of a rock of a rock um yeah yeah kind of, uh, that that that's, that's rock. definitely at the moment yeah <laughs> um it can change flits between that maybe iron maiden if i'm feeling a little heavier um but yeah it's, it's around that kind of region <laughs> what were you kind of um big fan of iron maiden's artwork you know eddie and yeah yeah eddie, eddie especially that's that's a good that's a good brand that. um especially when they started using the the sort of early 3d and sort of like the late 90s early 2000s um those those covers have not aged particularly well um, but it was it was great when i was you know when i was doing 3d work and looking at all that kind of stuff so yeah yeah i like the way they used to put eddie in different scenarios yeah yeah in it's, there. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's very much stuff. I think they've got a whole game on it, like a mobile game or something. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they've used that character and that kind of mascot quite quite well over the years. Brilliant. Okay, Dan, I think that's, uh, that uh, covers the interview. Uh, thanks for being a great, great guest. And um, Thank you, Mike. look forward to having you on again with some updates. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anytime, anytime. <laughs>